Shouters, and welcome back, Beehive. Because today we're going to talk about Beyonce, and not just Beyonce, because we could talk about her and just her general beautifulness forever. But the incident everyone is talking about her and Jay Z at the NBA playoff game, and the Golden State Warriors owner's wife, Nicole, leaning across, leaning across her as if she wasn't there to talk to Jay-Z. And Twitter has gone berserk. Like her fans have gone berserk, trolling Nicole on her own Instagram, like B emojis everywhere. It's a mess. And <laughs> the video is so great. It's so great. I wish I could embed it here. I can only do stills because I don't have the rights to the video. But like, Beyonce basically like shoulder checked this girl at the end, just kind of like, mm, like to get her sort of like out of her space. And Nicole tried to like deflect and sort of diffuse the situation today as this whole thing has been developing, or I guess yesterday, by posting a picture of her and Beyonce actually talking at some point during the night and with the caption like, treat everyone with kindness or one of those things. And it got me to thinking, oh, we... The reason this gasses everyone up is because we've all been in the situation where we've had to repel borders from some girl in weird boots coming for our dude. So today we're going to talk about what we should do when we feel like another chick is threatening our man in our relationship. But first, I just want to remind you guys that if you have a love question of your own, please find me on the Instant Go app. You can download it. You can download it. Sorry, my brain's like short circuiting. <laughs> my username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. Also follow me on Instagram, Snap, and Twitter at ShallonXO. And be sure and check out my brand new advice podcast where I answer the best questions you guys have submitted over the course of the week. Little bite-sized pieces of wisdom. So Bay, yeah. The reason I think that everyone had like such a strong reaction to this is because we've we've been the Beyonce. I mean, don't you just love saying that? I, I too have been where you are, Beyonce. <laughs> like, I want to feel like I have literally one thing in common with her. Where you have some, some person, like, slithering in between you. I remember I was in LA seeing my good guy, Fuckboy. And, like, I met him, whatever, there was, like, a party happening. And I was talking to him, and we were, like, flirting. This bitch literally, I mean, he and I were a foot apart. She wedges herself in front of us and faces him. And I, I grabbed her by her rat ass extensions. And I said, I'm grabbing you by your rat ass extensions. Take your forever 21 ass and get the fuck out of your cankles. And he was like, <laughs> and my thought process moved at like lightning speed, you know, because when you are confronted with an enemy, it's fight or flight. It's our human instinct. And I was like a Terminator, like scanning, scanning. What am I going to do now? Weighing all the options. And I decided on that tactic because I knew that I wasn't, subtlety was not going to work with this bitch. She was drunk and she was clearly ballsy enough to physically stand in front of a girl who is obviously there with a the guy and like literally insert herself into our lives. And so I'm like, okay, you want to make an extreme gesture? I can make an extreme gesture. I've said in the past that like when I was in college, I was in art, army ROTC and I read the art of war by Sun Tzu. That was part of like her training. And it informed a lot about my personality. Our ROTC in general really shaped me kind of into who the person I am today, but the art of war did as well. And I approached the world like in kind of my own distinct way. And it's not a super warm and fuzzy way. You know, that's not the purview of the world that I was taught. The turn the other cheek thing, it's not really, it's not really my thing. That's, that, you know what's great at that was Jesus. And that's really not my vibe. Even though my hair today is looking distinctly Christ-like or am I closer to Weird Al? I don't know. I, it's feeling, like it just looks like square, like a trapezoid. I don't even know what to do with it. Do I brush it out? I don't know. Please don't call attention to it. I'm sorry. So in The Art of War, one of the big lessons I learned <clears throat> was that if someone attacks you, your response has to be so overwhelming and insane that they are afraid to ever attack you again. And that like resonated with me in such a big way. I think because at that time in my life, and certainly for so many of us women, we feel and we are trained to be spineless. Oh, be polite, don't make waves, everyone needs to like you. I don't give a fuck if anyone likes me. There's like six people on planet earth who I need to like me and they do, so I'm good. I'm good until I'm like 85 years old. So if you're an interloper in my life, if you are coming to my fortress, guns a-blazing, I got guns of my own. 
So that is the approach I took with this girl. She was not going to come one more time. If she came back into that interaction, it was going to be with her fist pulled back. And like, okay, hopefully at that point, my good guy fuck boy would have stepped in and defended me, but probably not. It's a nice fuck boy. So there's a few different approaches. I wrote them down because I want to get this right. So yeah, there's the war approach. There's the Sun Tzu approach. Like we know girls like this. Sometimes they're named Crystal or Lacey or Brandy. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like spelled with a K, maybe an I at the end, just a little crazy, a little left to center. Sometimes they're bartenders. They ride mechanical bulls a lot. You know what I'm talking about. Dye their hair blue. Which I've, I've literally done all of these things. But they like that drama. And worse, their boyfriends like it. This is the problem with the war response is that that is what a fuck boy is always going to kind of like because a fuck boy is ruled by his ego and an ego needs to be fed. An ego is not about peace. An ego is about attention. So he wants whatever is going to get him the most attention. Do you ever watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? I used to love that show. And Stevie J, Stevie, he, uh, he's the ultimate fuck boy and he would love his ex-wife and his new chick, Jocelyn, the Puerto Rican princess, to fight each other. He loved it. He'd be like, he'd have that stupid look on his face, like, oh, because he was a sociopath and liked these two women going head to head. So he would engineer situations that would get them fighting and it would be so subtle and so manipulative. So if you're in a situation where you're like, why is he always talking about Nicole from accounting? Why does he keep wanting to bring me to this party where he knows his ex-girlfriend's going to be? It's because he is getting an emotional payout from that. Me, I keep A and B very separate. If there is an A and B, I will throw them together because I'm not a sociopath and I don't like that kind of drama. You know, I'm not a war machine. Some people are. So if that is the vibe you're getting from a guy or if, I mean, pull back and be like, is he actually the one engineering this? Does he like promote this kind of response? then that's not good. And the problem isn't actually the other girls. It's him because he's spraying out that vibe of like, yeah, come on, ladies, come on, ladies. Cause it's a fight night now. Like he likes that shit. But what if that's not the case? Let's say your boyfriend is not a complete psychopath and the girls are because I know how aggressive girls are. You know how I know? Cause I talk to girls all day long. I talk to you guys all day long and I listen to the things you do to get a guy's attention. I'm like, Ugh. so I know, and I've watched it and I've probably done it. So we all know what other females are capable of. And that's why we've like got our hackles up all the time, like ready to repel borders. Right? So if you don't want to go full out war machine, where if you were Beyonce, you would have grabbed that girl, palmed her by the face. Like she was a basketball and just, bleh, just shoved her over. She seems kind of, if you guys live in New York, you know the kind of chick I'm talking about. Like they've had too many nose jobs and they're kind of crazy. And they're like, do you know what? I'm just all about positivity. I love positivity. I mean, we should go on a yoga retreat. Do you go to the Hamptons? Where do you stay in the Hamptons? Do you like Wayne Scott? I don't like Wayne Scott. And you're just like, ah, oh, stop talking. Why do you have so many purse dogs? Shut up, shut up, shut up. She seems like that. And I'm like, she probably is. I'm sure she's nice though, whatever. So you can do the subtle war. You can do what Beyonce did, the little a little shoulder check. But my tactic typically is different. Girls have my boyfriend all the time, all the time. He is a smoke show and he's younger than me. And like, <laughs> it's so funny that like girls see him and I together and they're like, you're an old lady. And it's like, I got, see right there. You just already lost. You already lost. You proved my point about why guys want to date a chick who's older. Cause I don't speak like that. And I can go to a party and interact with other people without humiliating myself and showing how immature I am. So all you've done now is strengthen my position. Thank you. I'm getting laid tonight and you are not. But girls will like literally come for him while I'm standing there. And my response is one kind of, I call it the bless your heart. I come from a Southern family. And if you come from a Southern family, you know that bless your heart is the worst insult. It is like, <laughs> Because it's not only dismissive, it's pity. Just, I mean, bless her heart. You know, I just, you're trying so hard. I know, bless your heart. Bless you. Have a blessed day. You don't want to hear that. 
So I will sit there as girls try to like, you know, spit their game in front of my boyfriend with their like crop tops and ill-advised abs situation. And I just sit there and I'm like, I have a, I get bless your heart face. I'm like, how are you? What's your name? Crystal. Bless your heart. Because I can afford to come up from a place of magnanimity, of bigness, of emotional generosity. You know why? Because I am the baddest bitch around. There is no girl, no girl who is going to take my man. And if there is, let him go. Great. Then that shows his weakness. I don't fight for men. I fight for the last mozzarella stick. I have my priorities straight. So while I am prone to do this war machine thing, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to be someone's emotional parole officer. I use this term a lot. I don't want to be a fortress around a man. I don't want to be a sword. I want him to be my shield. He is supposed to protect me from the world. And yes, our partners, as we always like to know that, like, I want to know that he actually gives a shit. It's so <laughs> with me. Like, I want to know that he cares. But I don't want someone peeing a circle around me and like, eh, like keeping everyone away from me. I don't find that fun. Like, I need space and not the evil eye. And that's in what I'm willing to give my partner as well. But we know the situation. It's different than like, oh, so two people are talking to, she is coming for him. She is leaning across Beyonce's lap to talk to him. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. So I just, I just sit back and I let her embarrassingness just completely unfurl, just completely unfurl. I stand there and sometimes I just cross my arms and I just watch Michael Jackson popcorn gif. You know, I'm like, show me what you got, Crystal. Show me what you got, Kelsey. What is it? What are you going to do next? What are you going to do? Oh, what are you doing? No, you don't know. Oh, you all seem to take a selfie. Are you... <sighs> And when my boyfriend looks at me, because it's like a little kid, like looking at their mom, like, am I in trouble? I'm like, the longer you talk to this girl, the more you're embarrassing yourself. So I just like, I just shrug and I usually turn and I walk away. Because as a philosopher of our generation, Blake Shelton once said, who are you when I'm not looking? Who is my boyfriend when I'm not there? If I'm not there to police him, to repel borders and stand guard, what happens? I'd kind of like to know the answer. Because like I said, if he's gonna like go home with some tramp, <laughs> fucking bye. Welcome, come on home with the crotches cut out of all your pants. I don't care, you know, I can find another you. He's gonna have a much harder time replacing me. And it's going to be an ugly breakup because I have a YouTube channel with 100,000 people and he does it and I will light him the fuck up. I'm not going to do this because I love him. You, but they need to know what I'm capable of. And that's a different kind of war machine, isn't it? That's a different kind of Sun Tzu response. I don't need to like roll up my sleeves and clock a girl at a Black Bear concert. I can just stand and be like, you know the consequences. You know that if you cross a certain line, I am going to walk away and I am never going to come back because I don't need to come back for what? nothing. And that is the kind of attitude you have to cultivate throughout your entire relationship, you know, and it's never too late to start doing this. And if you are in a situation of the Beyonce sort of situation where it's like maybe after the fact, after the chick has run along to go to her like second bartending job of the night or whatever. I love bartenders. I'm not trying to shit on bartenders, but bartender chicks can be kind of crazy. They know how to fight. You can learn stuff. They know, they, like, they know all the good stuff. They know how to fight. They know how to talk to people and flirt. And they know how to make drinks. And stay up late. That's all I, that's all I need these skills. So after the situation has, you know, fizzled out, <clears throat> be like, so that girl you were talking to today, and you're like, oh, are you jealous? And you're like, I don't get jealous. I get going. Like, I'm your girl. You're my man. And I shouldn't have to police you and remind you of any of that. So I'm not going to. You're an adult. You know what you should be doing and you know what you shouldn't be doing. And if ever you don't know, think, hmm, would I be upset if she was doing this to me? If my girlfriend was acting like this with another dude and I was sitting there watching it. And if that doesn't sit with you, if that's a little prickly, if that's a cold prickly and not a warm fuzzy, maybe you should modify your behavior. But again, I don't need to tell you this, honey. You already know it because you're a grown man. 
and grown men understand that behaviors have consequences. And when you choose a behavior, you choose the consequence. And some things cannot be unchosen. You want to order mozzarella sticks? And then you change the subject. There's something to be said for quietness. You know when you watch like horror movies or like the Avengers movies, the villains are quiet. This is a psychological principle that the, the lower you talk and the slower you talk, the more menacing you appear. People who are like shrill and screaming, they're crazy, but you're, you're not like, that's a smart opponent. That's someone who's going to destroy me. You're like, ah, they're going to hit me in the face. I'm going to get an elbow to the eye. Like, I want to get out of their way, but it's not the same as like, I'm genuinely unnerved by this person and what they're capable of. And I believe in instilling a little bit of that supervillain vibe into your relationships. Let them know. So yeah, you have a few different options. Out and out war machine, which again, if you find yourself constantly being put in that position, that is his fault. He is getting an emotional payout of this. And honestly, you probably are too. I've gotten in two physical fights in my whole life, like off the hockey court. I played hockey for a really long time and we just get like ragers out there, but you're wearing equipment, you can't even feel it. I got in two physical fights and I was like deeply ashamed after you just, you, it doesn't feel like you think it's gonna feel. It, you're just like, oh, I'm a trash person. I'm a trash person, a steaming garbage fire. Like it needed to happen, but you don't feel great about yourself. And so if you're put in the position where either you're doing this a lot and you do feel great when you fight, you might want to, you know, look into some therapy for that because that's no way to live. Or worse, you feel shitty. And every time you're like, wow, really? Another night out at the bar that like we couldn't enjoy because Chad was flirting with this fucking chick. And like, I had to come in from the left horizontal flying through the air to take her out. Like, great fun times. At some point, we have to acknowledge, are we the architects of our own misfortune? What role are we playing in the situation that keeps happening? Because if the situation does keep happening, I mean, we've got a part in it too. So it's worth examining. The unexamined life is not worth living. And the unexamined life is really annoying. It's exhausting. And use that energy towards something positive in your life. Working out, writing that book, going to FIT, moving out of your small town, whatever it is, channel it away from this dude who, who is just like, <laughs> talk about Michael Jackson popcorn get, who is sitting there getting just this like circle jerk of attention from two chicks fighting. That's why dudes have multiple baby mamas. You think he doesn't know how to use a condom? Most people make like, have one baby mom and they're like, this is a lot of work. I don't want to do this anymore. But some people, they love it. They get off on that like infighting. It gives them value and they're like the puppet master. They're all fighting for me. Fight over mo mozzarella sticks. I promise you, it's more worth it. For more, find me on Insta, Snap, and Twitter at ChallenXL. And check out my new podcast, Girl on Top, on Spotify, Apple, Google, and every place else you find podcasts. And of course, find me on the Instant Go app if you want to chit chat privately. Oh, look at this. I'm so skilled. <laughs> and click chat to get connected with me right away. And if you guys have other video suggestions, like I said, leave them down below. And also tell me like your methods for dealing with interlopers in your relationship. Cause I really want to know. Forewarn is forearm. Ah.